Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm just going to cover some items that I picked up at Stonely Military Affair yesterday and uh, show you what I'm adding to the collection. Right guys, first thing, quickly get out of the way, what I picked up is I uh, grabbed another one of the Miltech M43 jackets. If I just uh, show you there. This is exactly the same jacket that I'm wearing in my late war impression video. Uh, I just wanted another one to use as my actual day-to-day -day coat because they're really nice. So I wanted one that's not covered in muck and grease and doesn't have any ranks or unit markings on, just uses a jacket. So I thought I'd quickly get that out of the way first. If anyone does want to do any M43s, the Miltech M43s at the minute are really good. Next up I popped into the Soldier of Fortune and uh, picked up another one of these wool blankets. I've now got quite a lot of these, I'm always picking up more of them because I'm either forgetting to take them places like last time because they're packed in various different bits of equipment or you just want more because it's so damn uncomfortable and cold. So uh, just another wool blanket. And whilst I was in Soldier of Fortune I picked up a couple of these green vests. Now I don't know how accurate these really are to supposedly what they got issued as under vests. Uh, I just needed something that I can have on at night or if I can come crawling out of my bed in the morning looking rough as hell but not have to sleep in my full uniform and when I come crawling out of my tent in the morning not have to be dressed in my full uniform I can just throw these on overnight and if I need to go to the loo or anything or get up in the morning without getting fully dressed because that's a bit obnoxious in a pub tent I can just chuck on one of these vests and they'll do a treat. I'm going to do a bit of research into these though and see how accurate they actually are to the like wartime things that got issued because I'm not convinced they're particularly good. They've got some markings and stuff on the inside, markings of what the original stock number and that should be, but I'm not convinced these are really a thing, so I'm going to do a bit more research on this. Right guys, now into the things that are a bit more interesting now, we've got the uh, random clothes out of the way. I picked myself up another reproduction belt. Like I said before, I've now decided that's impossible for me to find an original belt that's going to fit me at all. So I was hunting around the fair yesterday and there was one uh, stand that had these belts that just looked better than the rest of the fakes that I come across. They got nice brass fittings and the fact that they're actual brass instead of pot metal pretending to be steel means I rely on, I, can, I think I can trust this a bit more to not just fall apart. So anyway, I thought I'd grab one of these. These are for an upcoming project which I uh, won't wear on yet until I've got all of the bits for it and then I'm going to put it together on camera so you can see it but yeah this is a nice belt the colors pretty good hopefully that will dull down a little bit over use I'm probably grime it up a bit as well and that will fit in with some other stuff but the project that this is going to there'll be other various bits of webbing that aren't real so that should fit in well right guys so next thing on the item is to do with my not particularly good helmet that you've seen before so as you know or some of you should know from the old videos I didn't have a proper wartime liner for this, that was only a Vietnam era thing, or at least like, you know, post-war. So that didn't have the right fittings to have the little leather strap or anything on it. So again, whilst I was at Soldier Fortune yesterday, I picked up a really cheap and nasty helmet liner for this. There wasn't any proper ones for sale anywhere. There's only ones with whole helmets and they were disgustingly overpriced. So I picked this up and as I spin it around you can see just how cheap and nasty that is on the inside. It doesn't even pretend to be canvas or leather, that's just really yucky. But if your helmet's not upside down or when it's on your head, no one's going to notice that. Uh, and at least it has the fittings for the strap, although I had to basically hammer the fittings on because they didn't fit at all onto it. Really cheap and nasty piece of equipment, but it's actually very comfortable and it does fit my head. So now that that's in the helmet, you can't really tell. And the helmet's never going to be laying around upside down, so that doesn't matter. So anyway, this has got a least semi-correct liner in it now for in terms of when you're wearing it, even though it's garbage to look at from the underside. But what I want to do is bring up my helmet, because uh, I know I did a pretty terrible corking job on this. So yesterday, when I was fitting the new liner, I also went away and I, I scraped off a lot of the uh, cork off the top of this and uh, sanded some of it down to take the real sharpness off it and went out and give it another little paint job. I still probably got way too much cork on it but I have seen some photos of them really heavily cork. So if I just uh, stand up for a minute and show you the helmet. So that's, that's basically what we're looking at now. 
and uh, I want some honest opinions on uh, what you guys think of this in its current form. I know it's not that good, um, but I'm just hoping that now I've scraped quite a lot of the cork off it, you know, if that's deemed acceptable really. Uh, if not, I'll take the entire thing back to bare metal and I'll start again from scratch, but I'd rather not because at some point I'm just going to get a better helmet with a proper liner inside it. So as a stopgap, I just want to know what you guys think of this helmet basically. Now guys, we've got something that's actually probably more important than anything else I bought there. I've finally got myself some M37 wool trousers. I found a pair that aren't green. These are nice and brown looking. They aren't the really nasty bogey green that some of them are. I've uh, tried them on. They're comfortable. You can see they're not much different to the actual brown wool blanket I've got on the table here. So I can now finally set up and do for you guys a proper Normandy impression. There's nothing to do with the airborne. I can I can now do early war, late war, well for the Americans early war anyway. Any, anything I need to do. So I'm gonna pop these on with my shirt and just show you how they fit. They uh, pretty good. I'm happy with them. I didn't realize though that these don't have fittings for the braces. Um, that annoyed me a bit because I hate having belts done up tight but as I'm a bit of a lad I shouldn't have to have them done up too tight anyway. Right guys I've popped the uh, shirt and trousers on just to see what they fit. I'm pretty happy with them, they ain't got that horrible green tint to them at all, they aren't like obnoxiously baggy or obnoxiously tight, so uh, yeah I think these will do, now we can do some proper Normandy infantry impressions and not be stuck on the 43s all the time, so uh, yeah pretty happy with these, and uh, needs a bit of my lard and they'll fit even better, so brilliant. Right guys, now into the original items that I picked up, unfortunately yesterday there wasn't actually that much that I was interested in. Or there was quite, a, but the prices were just a joke. The prices in the UK have just got to the point where even people like me aren't prepared to spend the money on it, which is a real problem. I mean, how the hell youngsters who are starting out in the UK are meant to get into this hobby now, I just have no idea. Apart from buying really rubbish reproduction stuff, they're just getting priced completely out of the market. Anyway, rant aside, item number one. We got a really, really nice original Musette bag. Now, this wasn't cheap, but it was cheap compared to a lot of the other ones that are about. And the only reason I bought it for the price it was because it had a strap as well, so I figured that would counteract the price a little bit um, because I need a, another original strap. So this is really nice, and it's completely nice and soft, easily usable. My other Musette bag, which I haven't actually done a video for you yet, on is uh, one of the ones that was treated and is like stiff as a board. So uh, open this up, you can see that's all nice, no rips, no tears. Let's see if I can get the inside for you. Hang on. You can see that's nice and clean. There's a little bit of a like a stain in there, but nothing important. Unfortunately, the markings have all faded away. You still got the US on the front, but the actual uh, the actual markings inside of it seem to have been lost lost to time, which is a shame. But that doesn't really matter. So this is for use as just a general bag, um, and I might even fit to a weapon at some point. We'll see. I still want to get hold of a couple more Musette bags, but this was really good. And if I was going to pay a lot of money for a Musette bag, this is the one that I've chose to buy. So. Yeah, we've got a nice original Musette bag here and you will be seeing this in the future. And just whilst we're on the topic of the Musette bags, I'll just show you the treated one quickly. So this is my other Musette bag, you can see this is a nice OD green, that's a lovely colour. Original one, this has still got its markings, 1943. But as you can see, this is stiff as a board. So if I lift this top flap up, it just stays there because it's so stiff. Whereas if you get the new one and then let go, you can see. So this is one of the ones that's been treated, I suppose you'd call it, I suppose rubberized would be the, quite, the correct phrase for it. Yeah, excuse my stuttering. So uh, yeah, this is my other Musette bag that you haven't seen yet, that I've been using as my day bag when I've been doing not really late war. But uh, I call it Mr Crispy because you can't touch it without it crackling and it's stiff the board. You can literally have this empty and it will keep it shaped like this. So I uh, just thought that would be an interesting little thing to add to the video for you. Right guys, the last item I got then. This is going to shock some of you because you know how much I hate them. What have I done to myself? So, an original Haversack. That did have a date in it, I think. 
but I can't bother to do all, undo all the flaps to find out in a minute, I'll do some more videos on this. So anyway, I decided I needed an original haversack. The one I've got is nice, but it's still a repro, it's an old film prop from uh, Monuments Men, I think, is the film that came out of, I was told. But either way, this is a very nice haversack that is pretty much in perfect condition, no straps are missing, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of rust marking on here on the inside. So again, same as the Musette bag, if I was going to spend quite a lot of money on a haversack, this wasn't as much as the Musette bag, but it wasn't a lot of difference. This was the one I was going to get. It's got a nice meat cam pouch on it, all of the fittings are clean, there's no verdigree on them or anything like that. And when I opened it up, I thought I'd just have a look in the meat cam pouch to see if there's anything hiding. And uh, what I pulled out is this. So uh, hiding in there is an original little knife and I believe an original leather sheath. I obviously can't confirm this is an original one but it doesn't look new to me. It hasn't got that horrible orangey leather that the new ones have. Hang on, let me grab one. If I just lean over here. Yeah, so if you look at the difference in colour there, I feel pretty confident that this is an original little knife sheath for the haversack. So uh, I saw that in the pouch and went, oh that's handy, quickly shut it up so that the guy who was selling it didn't see in case he didn't realise it was in there. And uh, yeah, I bought this. So this will going to be added to the Normandy impression that I'm going to now do, a normal infantry impression, because I know everyone likes to see standard infantry sometimes instead of airborne and all that stuff. So I will do some more videos on haversacks because I know the video I last done was more basically me just ranting about how rubbish they are and how much I hate them. So we'll correct that a bit, do some things a bit more constructive. I'll do some research first, see exactly what I should put in this and how I should put it in there. I've got the original wartime tent half and everything now with all the pegs and everything. So I can do a proper nice little setup, even if I don't have it fitted to the web and I can have it with me. So uh, yeah, look forward to that. Normandy impression for riflemen, nothing fancy, no special equipment with the haversack, a proper basic infantry display, which is weird that I don't already have considering how much stuff I have, but I have had requests to be shown something like that no end of times on Discord and on here, so look forward to lots of haversack videos and some display impressions for riflemen. Right guys, so that's all i got for you today. I just thought I'd share with you the little haul that I got yesterday at Stonely. It was a good show, but, you know, the prices there are just getting stupid and people are blaming all sorts of different things for that reason, but there's no point spending loads of money on really little things if you've already got so much stuff, like I've got a pretty good collection. So I thought I'd share these with you today, let you know some of the projects that are coming up. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. But please do give me some feedback on that helmet because I know that's a weak point in my display. It looks a bit rubbish, but I always want to know what people really think. And if you've got any photos of heavily corked helmets, I found a couple last night, uh, share them with me so I can look into it, that make me feel a bit better about it probably, so thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.